Hello students and welcome back to another Lore of the Iron Kingdoms with, of course, me, Professor Castor. Today we're going to be continuing our discussion on uh, Trollblood Warlocks and their Mark IV changes, if there are any, and uh, see if they've gotten better, gotten worse, or stayed the same as per usual. The Trollblood Warlocks we're going to be discussing today are uh, Grim Angus, Hunter's Grim, his second version, Gristle Bloodsong the Fellcaller, Gristle Bloodsong the Marshal of the Creels, Captain Gunporn, and Brigandier General Gunborn. So, we'll be discussing the first and second versions of these particular warlocks. So, if you're enjoying this, and if you could, please like, subscribe, let us know how you're enjoying these, let us know if you have any cool stories about these, or if you've played against these guys or... Uh, with these guys on the battlefield. We'd love to hear about it. Also, another thank you to Privateer Press for letting us read their fantastic lore. And as always, your homework is please, because I like putting your homework at the beginning of these videos, the homework is please let your friends and fellow gamers know about our YouTube channel, because that does help keep the steam train rolling. And of course, helps increase our class size, which is always nice so we can get more community involvement, because that's what we love to see here on our comment page. Anyway, without further ado, let's begin. Grim Angus. Grim Angus is as grizzled and worldly a Trollkin as they come. He has traveled widely, captured or killed wanted men, and earned a reputation as a relentless tracker. The mere rumor of Grim Angus on a man's trail has prompted outlaws to surrender themselves and seek protection from the Trollkin whose aim never falters. With the Creels in turmoil, Grim has turned his skills and his massive rifle against the enemies of his people. Grim learned to hunt in the dank wooded swamps of Ord's Worthmore. Though an albino, the mark of a natural born Trollkin sorcerer, he eschewed his inborn powers to pursue his extraordinary talent for tracking and indulging his love of the hunt. As a youth, Grim Angus felt compelled to leave his isolated Creel and to see the world and he honed his abilities in his extensive travels. After exploring much of Ord and Kodor, Grimm began tracking down criminals for a living. The dangerous work provided him with the thrill of hunting mankind, which he found particularly satisfying. Grimm took to the work as if every day were a paid vacation, and his obvious enthusiasm inspired terror in his quarry. Crisscrossing Western and Morn, hunting the largest bounties, Grimm found more satisfaction from testing his limits than accumulating financial rewards. Eventually, the life began to wear on him, and he grew tired of taking out humanity's trash. Indeed, his prowess had surpassed the challenge. The murderers he chased were pathetic cowards, and he started to put himself in risky situations just to make things more interesting. The hunt having lost its pleasure, Grimm journeyed back to the bogs and swamps of his youth, only to discover the region overrun by the battles of the nearby Thornwood. Warring humans had forced his kin to relocate, putting them in an even greater peril. Tharn had beset his creel in an attempt to expand new territory deeper in the forest, and many Trollkin had lost their lives in the battles. The stories of survivors recounted stirred a sense of purpose in Grimm that he had not felt in years. Grimm brings to the creels a wilderness cunning almost unmatched in Western Amoran and the skills he developed in his previous life have given him a powerful edge. He moves through the forest with silent and patient skill, attacking the enemy with overwhelming force and ruthless efficiency when he finally strikes. To preserve the elements of surprise, he prefers firing his rifle headhunter from unseen vantage points or through dense cover. Grimm does not always work alone. Sometimes he agrees to lead other kin in the wilds, tracking more difficult prey together. When the enemy is at last surrounded, Grimm captured those who may have be of use and executes the rest. Some Trollkin find this methodical manner on the battlefield overly cold and calculating, but Grim Angus has spent his life mastering a heartless profession, and old habits die hard. He has no time for indecision. He intends to deliver a reckoning to the enemies of his people, one bullet at a time. Well, I suppose a bounty hunter would be very, very good at taking out targets for his people. And the fact that he is also a warlock makes him even more dangerous. I'm curious if him and uh, him and Alt Nashley have ever met or teamed up on any kind of hunts, although I know Alt Nashley usually prefers the hunting of beasts rather than men, but uh, I suppose each, uh, each bounty hunter chooses his own target, right? 
Alright, well let's see what their Mark 3 to Mark 4 changes are. I doubt there's that much, but you know, there can always be something. So, let's begin. And as always, let's start with his stat line, which is always important. Uh, he is a speed 6, magic attack of 6, a rat of 7, of course, since he is a bounty hunter, that makes sense. His mat is still a 6. Uh, defense still a 16 because, of course, he is used to putting his life into dangerous situations, and if you don't have the defense to get out of it, well, that would make you a very short-lived bounty hunter. Uh, his arm is still a 15, and he still has a control range of 12. And he still has tough, because he's a troll. He still has Pathfinder, because, of course, he is a hunter. And then every warlock was given dual attacks, so they can make ranged and melee attacks during the same activation. Of course, if you don't have gunfighter, you still get your minuses trying to make shots in the melee, but that is neither here nor there. Let's see if his abilities have changed. And that's going to be a big N-O on that. So he still has a Field Marshal True Sight. So cohorts in his battle group gain True Sight. And True Sight is a... This model ignores cloud effects when determining line of sight, and they also ignore stealth. So this guy removes stealth because, well, he doesn't see it anyway because he has been doing this a long time for very, very Heidi type of targets. And then, of course, he is a bounty hunter, so he still has his a takedown ability. So a model disabled by a melee attack made by this model cannot make tough rolls and this model boxes a melee attack made by this is removed from play so they don't gain any bodies and you don't gain any souls from a model removed from play in this manner so it makes him a very a dangerous indeed alrighty let's check out his weapons he still has his headhunter gun um, still a range 13 pow 13 magical weapon uh, looks like uh, they removed witch mark off this so he lost his ability to automatically target models that he shoots with it with spells, so unfortunately that is gone. But he still has Bait the Line, which Warbeast in his battle group gained plus two speed when charging a model damaged by this weapon. And at a POW 13, pretty likely it's gonna damage. Um, this is kinda like giving people very, like, I would say Hunter's Mark Light for Warbeast. Um, so, kind of a nice that you can just do that on a shot. Still a rate of fire one, but still nice to be able to, you know, get them an additional two speed. And then, of course, he still has his snare gun. Um, it is still a rat seven, range eight. Uh, oh, and he has this, uh, he has the ability to shoot this into melee, so he can knock down targets right next to him. Uh, the abilities on this weapon are still cumbersome, so if he attacks with this weapon, he cannot attack with his other weapon during this activation. And then the target's automatically knocked down, which is very useful, especially if you're trying to, you know, have your guys go in and just take him out wholesale. And then his last melee weapon is his blade gun because his gun definitely has a blade on it and any any uh, weapon held by a trollkin of his stature is usually pretty dangerous. Uh, this is a POW 12 weapon. He still has a mat 6 so he can still do some damage with it. So, But let's check out his his feet and see if that's changed at all. His, speed is, his feet is called a Spread the Net and no, it doesn't look like anything changed on that. Uh, while in Grimm's control range, enemy models suffer minus three defense. Uh, and then enemy models beginning their activation in his control range also suffer a minus three speed and cannot charge or make power attacks or special attacks. And it lasts for one round. So uh, that is a very useful ability to shut down people and lower their defense to make sure that whenever the set or whenever the trap is set, well, your enemies don't really have much of a way to counter that. So he is very high mobility. For a warcaster, which is kind of, or for a you know trollkin, because you know usually they're not super quick, but and he figured out a way to be a little faster. Uh, let's check out his spell list, see if anything changed there. Alrighty, well it appears his bear trap has been replaced with man trap, which is basically the same thing as as bear trap, but you know because he is a man hunter or <laughs> he he hunts men because he's a he's a bounty hunter. That makes sense for the name. Anyway, on a direct hit, warrior models hit become knocked down, and then it's a range 10. It is an AoE 3, so you can knock down lots of people. It's only a PAL 12, but automatic knockdown is very useful at all times. Um, his next spell, uh, Mark for Death, has not changed. Still, model suffers or target model suffers minus two defense, loses incorporeal and stealth, and cannot gain incorporeal or stealth while affected by Mark of Death. And yes, this is an upkeepable spell that you can keep on keeping on. Um, another spell that has not changed, Return Fire. Uh, return Fire, when target friendly faction model is targeted by an enemy ranged attack, 
After the attack is resolved, the affected model can make one basic melee or ranged attack, then return fire expires. So that's just a useful spell to have to kind of give your guys a little, you know, a back punch whenever they're, whenever anybody kind of targets them with anything. So, and then Wield Secrets has changed a little bit. Uh, Wield Secrets back in the day used to give the models Pathfinder and Hunter. And Hunter allowed it model, models to ignore cover and concealment. The new Wield Secrets uh, target model gains Pathfinder and Prowl. So it basically gives your model stealth if they're within concealment which is always useful and that actually makes sense for a guy that hunts for a living so although hunter still made sense too but eh, say la vie that's how it happens anyway that is everything for grim angus still very dangerous a, a fantastic ranged warlock and uh, look forward to uh, not having to play up against him on the field yeah but he's very mobile he has lots of good range attacks and if you put them with other people that are also very mobile and lots of range, you can run that table pretty easily. But let's move on. Hunter's Grim, Trollblood Warlock Unit. Among the finest trackers to stalk the wilds of Western Amorn, Grim Angus and his band of scouts comprise the first line of defense for the United Creel. Ranging ahead the fighting forces, Grim's band identifies foes and sometimes eliminates them long before other warriors even know they are there. While once more of a loner working for the Creels, he has grown into an invaluable leader of the irregular skirmishers fighting alongside the frontline warriors of the new United Creels. When leaders like Madrak Ironhide and Gristle Bloodsong require the completion of missions in the most remote and inhospitable reaches, it is Grim Angus they turn. His mastery of the wilds and his skill at coordinating armed forces and stealthy ambushes have made his hand-picked team one of the greatest assets of the gathered Creels. Even his role with the Creels has evolved. Grim remains essentially an outsider, a fact he embraces unapologetically. In part, it is his outside perspective that makes him so valuable to the leaders who rely upon his opinions. He has no interest in spending his days surrounded by kin other than those who know how to survive in the wilds. Skinners and hunters who know when to keep their steps light and their mouths shut, and who will obey his signaled orders without hesitation. He has found the company of pigs to be particularly amenable, as they are less inclined to idle chatter and understand that survival in battle requires paying attention and looking out for one another. Grimm is ultimately a pragmatist who prefers a view of the world in tangible terms. He has worked particularly closely with Grizzle of Bloodsong in her efforts to protect the Creels while trying to carve out a new home for them. He understands what it takes to get through a difficult winter on the scraps one can find in barren landscapes and has applied those skills to good ends. He returns to his camp only long enough to allow his warriors and full blood trolls to feed and get some minimal rest before setting back out to fight again. His skills are in particular demand among the new territories and lands seized by the Creels to create lasting homes and strongholds. In all his tasks, Grimm is assisted by a pair of pigs that have become the core of his team, Mugs and Crump. And those, and those two came to prominence by proving themselves to be intelligent and crafty, as well as superlative hunters. In short order, the pair has learned to grasp Grimm's complex system of gestured signals and to fight smoothly alongside him even in silence, all three of them coordinating precise ambushes while tracking their enemies. Mugs and Crumps have passed along their expertise to other pigs in the hunting bands and often help keep them in line. Freeing Grimm to focus on the primary task at hand, Grimm has taken the time to teach Mugs how to use the snare gun and has come to entrust the pig with it. While Crump has proven quite capable of devising and implementing cunning snares even in the midst of battle, together the team of hunters Grimm have proven to be more than the sum of their individual skills, working seamlessly together on the battlefield to bring down the most difficult targets. Grimm and those he leads have steadily become the eyes and ears of the United Creels, and its leaders know well just how blind and unready they would be without the tireless efforts of the, on the fringes of their lands. So yes, now he's got a little group so he doesn't have to use that cumbersome weapon to knock down people. So yeah, and pigs are actually really, really good at doing very particular tasks and developing skills of survival 
Because unlike, you know, larger trokens, they're usually just good at fighting. Pigs had to, well, since pigs are much smaller than their, than their you know, brothers, uh, these guys had to come up with more devious ways of survival. So, yeah, he is even better with his uh, grim, or his pig companions. So, I'm glad that he found some friends. But let's see how much more dangerous those friends have made him as we discuss the Mark III to Mark IV changes of Grimm into his Hunter's Grimm form. And we will start with Grimm himself with his stat line. He is still a Speed 6, he is still a, a Magic 6, he is still a Mat 6, he is still a Rat of 8, uh, he still has a Defense of 16, still has an Armor of 15, and still has a Control Range of 12, and some of the abilities he still has is he's still tough because he's still a troll blood. Uh, he still has Pathfinder and he still has a dual attack, which is his basic thing. Um, he still has uh, takedown, so models disabled by a melee attack made by this model cannot make tough rolls and they are removed from play. So they lose their bodies and anybody who tries to get those. Um, but let's go over his weapons. He still has his headhunter and it still has a blood lure on it, which allows his models in his battle group to charge the enemy model without having to be forced. So I think that might be a little different from his original, but eh, that's still just as good. And then he still has his gun blade at a range 1 at POW 12, so he is still a dangerous there, but let's read his feet and see if that changed at all. Alright, it's on my mark, and this is actually a very, very good spell for a ranged army. Or very good feet, mind you. So what it does is, while in Grimm's control range, friendly faction models gain mark target, and their ranged attacks gain snipe. So and that lasts for one turn. So what what uh, Mark Target does is other friendly faction models gain plus two to their ranged attack rolls against enemy models within five of a model with Mark Target while in their line of sight. And then it also stacks on a plus three to the range of models with Snipe. So yeah, so they get a plus three range and a plus two if they're shooting at somebody that's near another model in their army. So. That's a very dangerous feat, and very good if you can get your guys up there and in there, and if you're running a pig's force that's all range guys, yeah, that is probably going to happen 9 times out of 10. But let's go over his spells, see if anything changed there. Alrighty, looks like Mage Sight. He still has Mage Sight, but it has changed in the abilities that it does. So it used to be you place a 5 inch AoE in the Spellcaster's control range, and while it models in the AoE, the Spellcaster's battle group ignores forest and cloud effects when determining line of sight and they ignore stealth. That's been removed. Eyeless Sight is now, while in the spellcaster control range, models in his battle group had gain eyeless sight. Pretty simple, although they don't have the line of sight drawing through forest, which is actually a really nice spell, but eh, that's how it changes sometimes. Uh, looks like we still have Mirage, so target friendly faction model slash unit gains apparition. And during your control phrase, a model with apparition can move or can be placed anywhere completely within two inches of its current location. Pretty much the same as the original. Uh, then we still have mortality, which is always a useful spell because you know heavy war beasts or dodgy war beasts are very nice if you can knock them down a notch. So mortality, uh, target model slash unit suffers minus two defense and arm, and then they lose tough and they cannot have damage removed from it for one round, which is a heck a good spell and I like to use it a lot whenever I have that opportunity and then we still have pursuit so if the target enemy model or slash unit advances during its activation one model in the spellcaster battle group that is in his control range can immediately make it full advance so if people are trying to run or trying to back off your guys can or at least one of you guys can follow up so that is a very a very useful ability and it, yeah outside of the mage site being changed up all the rest of its Pretty much the same thing as is. Uh, but let's go check out his assistants, his mugs and crump, and then we will see what they add to him. And we will start with mugs. Uh, we'll start with his stat line. It's still a speed six, so he's keeping up with this Trollkin Warcaster. Um, his, his mat is still a five, rat is still a six, which is pretty decent. Uh, defense still a 14, armor 12. He is a pig. They don't have usually a very high armor. Uh, he does, however, have tough and pathfinder, and he also has a dual attack, so he can attack with both his melee and ranged weapons at the same activation. Uh, he still has reposition 3, although I don't think it's a reposition for the entire force. I'm not entirely sure. 
Uh, it says at the end of this model slash units activation in which it did not run or fail a charge, this model can advance up to three. And I suppose because of the wording on there, it does go to the whole unit. So there you go. Uh, he still has takedown, so he was you know probably taught by by uh, his warlock how to take those guys out. Um, and this guy is the guy who's given the snare gun, so it automatically knocks people down. Um, it's still a range eight. Uh, a little bit less rat because he's well, he's not he's not grim himself, so that's how it works. Uh, but still knocked down, so and he can still shoot that into melee, and then he can still clock him with his little power eight X that he has there. So yeah, no, he's still pretty uh, pretty much the same that he was before. Um, still adding uh, adding that additional gun makes Grim's job probably a lot easier. And of course, all these guys are companions with Grim, so they will have to uh, they will have to make it work like that because they are a unit. And if Grim goes, so do they. So if you're playing a multi warlock game and you're playing with Grim and he dies, well, they they his little assistants kind of go with him. So, alrighty, let's move on to Crump and see if he has changed at all. Uh, he's still a companion to the unit. Uh, he still has tough, he still has Pathfinder, and he was given dual attack because, well, he is now a warlock group and most of those guys have it. Uh, he still has his takedown ability because, well, of course he is still with Grim, so that is something that has. Looks like he lost circular vision, but everybody gained circular vision, so it's not really a loss because everybody has a 360 degree site now and there is no backstrikes so yeah it's something that they took away didn't really make any difference he already had it so uh, and then the ability he still has is trapper although trapper has been reduced it is no longer a five inch aoe it is just a three inch template anywhere within two of this model and model the template remains in play for one round living in undead models entering or ending their activation in the template suffer a POW 10 damage roll and models damaged by trapper become knocked down so that's still useful it's still a special action so you can either choose to drop one of those things or shoot or you know charge or something like that so it is still a special action uh, his weapons still include his blunderbust at a range 8 a POW 12 and it's a and he is a gunner so he can do that while in melee and then he has his hand axe as well not <laughs> you probably don't want to get these guys in melee if you can avoid it so you know, keep these guys at range so but yeah having trapper really locks it down unfortunately it's not a five inch aoe anymore it is just three but it still does basically the same thing and it does not affect flight models which makes sense since they're not walking on the ground um, yeah, so he is, he got a little bit better since uh, Grim no longer has to handle his little snare gun all by himself. He has an assistant to do that for him, so he can knock people down and just go pop pop and take them out. Um, yeah, honestly, he's just the, he's the same warcaster that he was before. He just has some more assistance to, you know, make him even more deadly on the battlefield. Huh, well, let's move on. Grizzle Bloodsong Fellcaller. Fellcallers are powerful Trollkin warriors, boasting voices capable of shattering stone and shaking the sky. Female Fellcallers are rare, but Grizzle Bloodsong has gained singular power through her mastery of this ability. Her mate's death left a hole in her heart and she filled it with a new cause, fighting to save her people. Bloodsong was born in the far north of Auk. But her wanderlust compelled her to travel. She sailed the length of the western Amoran coast and spent several years in the human port cities defending merchant ships against pirates and Crixian invaders. She enjoyed her mercenary life at sea, but found the return to the city living after every voyage stifling. Eventually, she lost her patience for humanity entirely and left the coast for the banks of the Black River, along whose links she battled river bandits for a time. After visiting Turnin Crag, Grizzle found an unexpected challenge, the relentless advance of a fierce and proud Trokin named Turgul Redeye. She initially turned aside his interest, but he continued to pursue her in hopes of taming her fiery heart. They eventually got into a drunken brawl that tore a tavern down to its foundation, not dissuaded, he approached her the next day, bearing a smile and a quip. Her, he slowly earned her affection through the quiet humor, irrepressible optimism, and his skill with the blade. 
For the first time, Grizzle considered settling down, and the two of them journeyed to Scarsforth Lake, where several Trokan Creels had villages near the clay soil Wash River. One day, a contingent of Scorn Raiders attacked the east. Turgle left Grizzle's side to thrust himself heroically between the three Cyclopses and a Trokan mother with two small infants. Turgle fought bravely and brought down one of the attackers, but his hide was not as impenetrable as his resolve. Before Grizzle could come to his aid, one of the remaining Cyclopses struck him down. Flying into a blood rage, Grizzle unleashed her calls in pulverizing blasts of sonic vengeance. Turgle's death changed Grizzle Bloodsong. She began a personal war against the Scorn and became an icon among the war-ravaged Trokans in the Scarforth region. She has remained at the battlefront where her presence emboldens Trokans who follow her into battle. Contact with the chief Madrak Ironhide renewed Grizzle's hopes for the Trokan victory. She persuaded her people to join Ironhide's displaced Thornwood Creels, knowing the only chance to survive would come from cooperating against the various threats they face. She feels they part of a larger community as she walks among the rugged and courageous volunteers serving in Madrak's ragtag army. She fights not for empty coin, as when she was a mercenary, but to preserve her Trokan brethren. This purpose has given her strength to endure the lasting grief of losing her mate, which she feels keenly in the calm after every battle. Well, that's actually kind of a sad story, losing your losing your mate, or, you know, husband, wife, partner, whatever you want to call them. And fell callers are very dangerous because I, I've never seen uh, people be able to command the same voice of a Trollkin. Like even even Meaneth in their you know in their choirs or whatever, they they are able to you know manipulate certain things. But a fell caller can literally knock down a building with just their voice, and uh, I feel like that's sometimes a little bit stronger than uh, than anything. So be wary of this, and be wary of this lady and her hammer, because. Uh, if you see her running at you, she is a force to be reckoned with. And as in every Trollkin, they're always going to be bigger than humans. Unless, of course, they're pigs. And even then, I feel like pigs are about the same size as a standard human. Well, maybe not the exact same size, but definitely by weight. But let's see what her Mark III to Mark IV changes are and see if she's gotten better, worse, or the same. And I'm going to say probably the same. Alright, and of course we are going to start with their stats as always. She's still a speed 6, uh, still a mat 6, still a rat 6. Well, actually, no, sorry. She's a rat 7 now, so she's gotten better. Uh, defense still a 15, armor still a 16, her arc is still a 6, and her control range is still a 12. And of course she does still have tough because, well, she is a troll blood, and of course she has dual attack because, well... She's a Warcaster, or a Warlock, so that does make sense. Alrighty, well, and it does appear we do have some changes here outside of her rat getting better. Uh, so, she does have her fell Calls, as always, and fell Calls are fantastic abilities, and they usually affect a lot of people. But, it looks like we still have Concophony. Uh, so, while within 10 of this model, enemy models cannot cast or channel spells within 10 inches of her, so, you know. Definitely a frontline caster, and if your opponent is a lot of spellcasters, this will lock them down pretty, pretty well done. Um, Heroic Ballad has been taken out. Heroic Ballad did give guys an additional melee attack during their combat action. Um, that sounds a little dangerous. So unfortunately, that has been removed. Uh, she has Hoof It, so I guess that was... Um, allows models to move and not be targeted by free strikes, which makes sense uh, that that was removed because free strikes are no longer a thing. Well, they're still a thing, but they don't do the same thing they did before. Uh, and then it appears Unbreakable has been taken out, uh, so you no longer can give uh, model or unit unyielding uh, the plus two armor. And then Harmony has been removed. Uh, Harmony was a ability to allow uh, models to have more than one fell call active at a time. Um, so if there were multiple fell callers in the army, you know you could hit somebody with two different fell callers and give them crazy high perks. So unfortunately, that has been taken out, probably to balance it out, make her a little less powerful. But you know, 
we will go over her new fell calls that she has. Uh, so she has Desperate Pace. Uh, so it's a range 5. Dar target friendly Trollkin unit. They gain a plus 2 to their normal movement speed. Uh, and then she was given the fell call of Money Shot. So range 5. Uh, friendly faction warrior model slash unit. Gets plus 2 rat and plus 2 to its range damage rolls. Which is actually pretty staggeringly damaging for, uh, for that. Because I've seen Money Shot be able to make... Uh, you know, normally not very accurate, not very strong units of gunners incredibly strong on the battlefield and be able to take out, you know, chunks out of huge warjacks or colossals. But yeah, it's very dangerous. Uh, looks like she was given Reveal, a Revel, Revile. Anyway, knock down friendly faction models within 10 of her, immediately stand up, and then models that became knocked down this turn are not affected. So yeah, very useful, especially since. Trollkins all have tough, which means if they do tough, they are knocked down, and that ability really makes them even better, so, yeah. And then we have Tenacity as one of our fell calls, so a target-friendly uh, faction warrior model slash unit. If this model's in range, they gain feign death, so they can't be targeted by ranged or arcane attacks while knocked down, which is kind of awesome, um, because being hit with anything when you're knocked down, well, you lose tough, so... Might as well take care of that now. Alright, let's go over her weapons, see if anything has changed there. Alright, so she has her Sonic Blast, which is her voice, I imagine. Uh, it is, it has been upgraded to a Spray 10, so that's awesome. Uh, Rat, it was a, it was a Spray 8, now it's a Spray 10, so she got a lot more, a lot more range on that. Although the Spray template is changed, it's no longer in a widespread, it's just in a, um, just in a straight line for the new Mark IV. Um, this has been given Gunfighter, so she can use it in melee without any issues. Uh, it is still a pound 12 damage roll. Uh, uh, it appears that she now has Reload on it, so she can shoot it twice, which at a range 10 power 12, you can really you know, clear out some more heavily armored dudes with that. Uh, and then her Deafen has been nerfed down to Stun, which... Uh, makes sense since uh, models no longer receive orders or anything like that so it still gives the uh, models hit they suffer a minus two defense which makes sense that they would change that because in mark four there are no orders that's just how it goes and then her resounder axe is still a still a mat six although it is now a range two so it's a reach weapon and it's still a power 14 a magic weapon so so as far as her weapons go, her weapons have gotten more dangerous, have gotten more range, and are able to do a little bit more, well, I'm going to say more damage, but more consistent damage. But let's check out her feet and see if that's changed. And it appears Fel Chorus has changed, unfortunately. So Fel Chorus used to be, uh, they can immediately cast spells without spending focus or cast a spell without spending focus, and that Grizzle can use all four of her fell calls. This activation, no longer the case because her fell calls have been changed to battle plans. So let's read what the newer one says. Grizzle can use her battle plans three times this activation, but can only use each battle plan once. So I guess she can really use like three of the five that she has all at once, which is, in, in retrospect, that still is a crazy amounts of damage. Get you guys moving faster, get some shooting harder, stands people up, gives them feign death. Um, she can lock down, lock down spellcasters. It's very dangerous, very powerful regardless. So yeah, I would say it's still as good, although the free spells are always, always missed, but eh, that's how it goes. Let's read her spell list and see if anything has changed there. And of course, yes, she has changed a little bit in her spell list. Uh, so um, they removed Boundless Charge, uh, but Boundless Charge has been replaced with Onslaught, which uh, Spellcaster and Friendly Faction models beginning their activation and her control range gain Relentless Charge. So it just gives everybody a, a plus, or that gives everybody Pathfinder while charging. So um, that's actually a little bit better because it, it can affect a lot more people. Um, it does reduce, of course, the speed boost that you get from Boundless Charge, but it makes everybody, uh, gives everybody Boundless Charge, or 
yeah, gives everybody Pathfinder, which is always a nice. Um, looks like Calamity has been removed, so she no longer uh, can make a unit suffer minus two defense and minus two arm. Uh, her Guardian Protector has been replaced with Hollowed Avenger, which is the same thing. Target friendly faction cohort model gains Righteous Vengeance. Um, which Righteous Vengeance, if one or more friendly faction warrior models are destroyed or removed from play by an enemy attack while within five of this model with Righteous Vengeance during the last round during your maintenance phase, the model with Righteous Vengeance can advance up to three and then make one basic attack. Doesn't say what kind of basic attack, so that's even nicer. Uh, because on the original Guardian Protector, um, it gave Righteous Vengeance to a War Beast, and it specified it had to make a melee attack. And, well, that's kind of nice that it's no longer a melee attack, it's just an attack. So if you want to move up and shoot something, that's always an option in that particular version. And then another spell she was given, I'm not sure if I've read this yet, um, she was given a deflection. So, while within the spellcaster's control range, friendly faction models gain plus two to defense against ranged and magic attacks. Deflection lasts for one round. And I want to note in Mark IV, it does have to specify ranged and magic because certain certain defense spells do not cover magic attacks. I'm not sure why they why they created that because I figure if something's hard to shoot with a gun, it's probably hard to shoot with magic, but. Neither here nor there, not entirely sure. And then the last of the spells that she got was Rift, which is basically the same thing as it was before. Um, still a range 10 spell, still uh, power 13. Um, yes, it's offensive. Uh, and then it does Rift. So center a three inch template on the model directly hit. The template is rough terrain and remains in play for one round. I believe back in the day it used to be a 4 inch template, but 4 inch templates aren't really used that much in a Mark IV, unfortunately. But as far as a spellcaster goes, she is very good at helping her guys get even better with her fell calls. And she is super dangerous with that sonic blast that she can do. Because if you can lower people's defense and you can increase your ranged attack damage rolls and rat, you can make a, a pretty decent ranged group out of this. And then she's just as uh, just as solid in melee as well with a defense 15 and an armor 16. So, and being able to give herself deflection or everybody within her stuff deflection, you kick that you kick that 15 defense up to a 17 defense against range. You're probably gonna be they're probably gonna be dodging bullets and magic like crazy on this one. So, yeah, she's a very dangerous warcaster or warlock. And I do not look forward to seeing her in the future. But let's move on to her next version. Gristle of Bloodsong, Marshal of the Creels. Gristle Bloodsong stands as a bastion amid the storm devastating the lives of her people. Both warriors and elders of the Creels look to Gristle to be the voice of reason when all else fails. They trust her to save their people, whether a shrewd word or the booming of her explosive voice and hammer on the battlefield. Gristle assumes the mantle of Marshal of the Creels in that difficult and dark time when Madrak Ironhide felt compelled to isolate himself from his people as he sought a solution to the curse of Rathrock. She had long been looked to as the leading figure among the warriors of the United Creels, but this time period cemented her stature. Though this role was somewhat thrust upon her, she shouldered its responsibilities with courage, conviction, and inventive creativity, preserving the displaced kin even when beset on all sides by hostile enemies. When Madrak returned to lead his people to new lands, Gristle went with him and has retained her position. Leadership in the Eastern Creels is shared between them, and she has worked tirelessly to build a lasting home for their people and to organize them into an army that will endure any hardship. Gristle knows survival is tenuous and that ultimately no soil is more important than the lives of her kin. The wars they have endured were not of their choosing and required difficult choices. She has learned from these lessons and gladly fights alongside her warriors, asking nothing of them she would not risk herself. With her willingness to embrace all weapons, they can seize the Trolk and see Gristle as a welcome bridge between older traditions and the new ways that might be required to preserve their futures. 
Proving her pragmatism, Grissel has made short-term arrangements with outsiders, including mercenaries and other warlike tribes of the remote wilderness. She uses all of her wits to, to keep the argumentative leaders of the Creels united. With every passing day, she proves the wisdom of Madrak's faith in her. She will not rest so long as her people are endangered, using every ounce of her cunning and courage to preserve, preserve them from extinction. And yeah, Grizzle Bloodsong, as a leader of the Kurils while Madrak was going, is always something nice that uh, more leaders will stand up with the Kurils when Madrak himself cannot. Or, you know, he's working with that Wrathrock, the Cursed Axe, as we mentioned in a previous chapter. So, yeah, another, well, Marshal, Lieutenant, whatever, helps keep the Kurils united and keeps them going. So, she is definitely worth her weight in the salt. Or gold, depending on which ones you see more valuable. But let's read her um, Mark 3 to Mark 4 changes, see if there is any. She did a quite a few changes last, last edition, so let's see what we got here. Alright, and as always, let's start with stat lines. She is a speed 6, magic attack of 6. Um, her mat is still a 7. Her rat is now a 7, so that's been a little bit improved. I think we saw that in the last version of her as well. Uh, defense is a 15. Arm is a 17. And she still has tough because she's still broken. And she still has dual attack because, well, every warcaster slash warlock has dual attack. Just because, well, they are trained for combat as is. And let's go over her abilities real quick. Alright, now I see an improvement in her abilities. Uh, I imagine in this Mark IV, she's more of a leader of her people. Uh, so they switched out her Unyielding, which gave her a plus two arm against melee attacks. And they switched it over to Tactician. And Tactician is a very awesome spell. Or awesome, not spell. Awesome tactic, because it allows every model within ten of her, like all friendly models, to ignore friendly models when determining line of sight. And then friendly models can advance through other friendly models within the 10 inches if they have enough movement to get completely past them. And for an army made up of a lot of medium bases, large bases, and a couple gargantuan bases, having the ability to see through each other and shoot through each other is a godsend and you would love to have that. And I have used that many times in my time playing this game. So yeah, I see that as a huge improvement. But let's check out her weapons and see if anything has changed there. Alrighty, we'll start with her, of course, fantastic Fell Blast voice. And in her upgraded, her voice is also upgraded, so that's always nice. Uh, still a, well, jumped up to a rat of 7, range 8 on this one, uh, no longer a spray. Uh, this one's actually an AoE, so that's a little different, last version was a spray. Uh, she has rate of fire 3, so she can fire 3 times with this weapon. An AoE of 2, so 2 additional models at 2 inches away. And then the power is a 14 slash 8, and it's a magical weapon. And a fun thing, this actually has attack types on it, so you get to choose whenever you're making an attack, what the attack does. Uh, so it appears that we kept Crescendo, or Crescendo, however you want to pronounce it. Uh, then place a three inch template on the model targeted. A model entering or ending its activation in one or more of Crescendo's templates suffer a POW, 12, or POW 7 blast damage roll. So that's actually a pretty fantastic there. Although if they do have blast resistance, that is one less die on that, but that's still free damage and uh, he can never block some free damage. Uh, template re template remains in play for one round, so yeah, you can really start tossing some stuff to keep some people wanting to run through, especially low armored people like elves. And uh, the next ability you can choose for this weapon is Quake. So on a direct hit, models hit become knocked down, and this being an AOE of two, you can knock down up to three guys, and you have a rate of fire of three, so you spread that around and knock down an entire front row if you really need to. And then the last one. Uh, the weapon gains pistol, and its base stat becomes spray 10. Uh, you remove the AoE, and it's a pound 12, so much like her original, uh, she can go back to her spraying attacks. So, always useful there. It's kind of nice they allowed her to do that. And it's super nice they gave it pistols, so if somebody is in her melee range, that, uh, that having that additional ability is always nice if you can go back to what you're good at. Then her hammer, or, yeah, it's a hammer. Sorry, I had to look at her up picture here. 
It is a Mat 7, although this one is a little shorter than another hammer. It goes back to range 1 and a POW 14, and it has magic weapon and critical smite. So on a critical, the model hit is slammed D6 inches directly away from the model. Uh, if the model hit is larger than her, uh, it only is half that distance, and the power of the collateral damage is equal to the power of weapon. So at a POW 14, you can do damage pretty good to lower lower armed enemies, and you know, if you're fishing for crits at least. Let's go over her feet real quick. And her feet is basically the same. A call to Valor, or Call of Valor, friendly faction models currently in her control range. Gain reposition and unyielding. And then it lasts for one round. And both those abilities on Trokin that are already super, well, hefty anyway, adding additional armor to them while they're in melee. And then the ability to reposition after they don't fail a run or, or they did not run or fail a charge. Uh, yeah, that gives them incredible mobility, uh, especially like she's already a uh, she's already a movement six, which is pretty quick. But like you know, adding additional movement or allowing you to reposition in areas that makes your enemies a lot more uh, you know annoyed because they can't charge in is pretty phenomenal. So, and that actually kicks her uh, kicks her arm up to a 19. So it's fantastic on her. But let's see what kind of spells she still has and uh, see if anything has changed there and looking at it off the top does not look like any of her spell list changed thank goodness because the last version of it changed quite a bit so she still has dash um, which the spellcaster and friendly faction warrior models warrior very specific uh, models activated in her control range gain plus one speed so that is phenomenal uh, they removed the, of course the parry off dash now because you don't need parry anymore although Having the ability to move past enemy models without having to lose your attack is cool, but maybe they just had to nerf that down a little bit for the Mark IV, which makes sense. Alright, and moving on, it uh, looks like she still has Deflection, which is phenomenal. It's still a, while in the Spellcaster's control range, friendly faction models gain a plus two defense against ranged and magic attacks, so giving them the, uh, giving them the ability to kind of be more dodgy is always nice. And with her, since she's in her spellcaster control range, gets her defense up to a 17, which is ungodly for any Trollkin. So, yeah, most likely she's not going to be shot at by very much. And very good at protecting her people around her, at least making them much more difficult to hit. And then it appears she still has her Discord spell as well. So, target model in the spellcaster's battle group gains wailing. While within 5 inches of a model with wailing, enemy models cannot cast or channel spells. And yeah, that is very, very useful, and I have used that spell when I was taught it many a times on the battlefield, because you can shut down a spellcaster, especially if you have, well, a little bit quicker war, war beast that you can, you know, jump behind enemy lines and really, you know, muddle up the whole thing. It used to affect models with orders as well, but since orders are not used in Mark IV anymore, it just does spells, so it's still a very very solid spell and it's upkeepable so you can toss it on your toss it on your little quick guys and shoot them up there as quick as possible so yeah but it looks like she is definitely a very pro trooper warcaster here the ability to give her guys give her guys unyielding on her feet turn give them reposition on her feet turn give them dash making them faster as is and then giving them an additional you know two two defense against ranged and magic attacks yeah she is definitely a fantastic caster to keep units going forward and on top of all that not only does she make them faster and harder to hit and harder to damage she also gives them tactician too so then they can shoot through each other as if they're not there and move through each other as if they're not there so yeah no she is a phenomenal caster and I do not look forward to seeing her on the battlefield if I have to go up against her so but let's move on Captain Gunborn Born among the Trollkin of Serral, Gunborn spent his youth in the city streets and dockside warehouses, far from the ancient villages traditionally inhabited by his people. His father, once a powerful warlock, had allowed his own mystic potency to atrophy, likely from drunkenness and isolation from the wild. As a youth, Gunborn was never exposed to full-blood trolls. 
While he heard stories of the exploits of wilderness warlocks, he was convinced such tales were just myths of his people. The poverty of his tribe disgusted him, and he turned his back on the Trollkin community. Gunborn, or Gunjorn, I'm going to say Gunborn, it's easier to pronounce, embraced the human nations he, was, he saw as his true homeland and enlisted as a trencher when he came of age. Although Trollkins are uncommon in, in the Signaran army, they are almost never turned away due to their great strength, endurance, and loyalty. In the following years, Gunborn quickly rose through the enlisted ranks and eventually earned an officer commission. Gunborn no-nonsense attitude earned him the respect of his men, and his grasp of strategy and careful tactical planning earned his company many dangerous and high-profile missions. During the Signaran retreat from Northgard, Gunborn's composure served as a rallying point for the trenchers under his command. The survivors will speak of their captain standing like a rock in the chaos of the retreat, fighting a one-man rearguard action. Throughout his Signaran military career, Gunborn took notice of the displaced Trollkin refugees pouring from the Thornwood and other contested regions. When his superiors ordered him to oversee the displacement of the small creel near Point Bourne, he grimly resolved to do his duty. During the action, an elder Trollkin refused to vacate his ancient stone hut, and Gunborn found himself screaming at the aging Trollkin before striking him to the ground. The elder staring reproach shook the warrior to the core. Other soldiers set fire to the village before he could respond, and Gunborn could only watch as the Trollkins were dragged from their homes and pushed toward the road. Reeling from this epiphany, he left his company to make way f back to Serral and seek guidance. He went to beg the forgiveness of his father, but the elder sadly told him of his sire's ignominious death months earlier. Sensing Gunborn was on the cusp of spiritual transformation, they advised him to seek out the great chief Madrak Ironhide, whose deeds had already been made famous throughout the scattered creels. The chance to put his military training to a noble purpose appealed to Gunborn. After his arrival in Crail Valley, where Ironhide's Thornwood refugees were gathered, not only did he find welcome among the community's Trollkin, but he also experienced an immediate connection with the full-blooded trolls gathered there. He knelt before Ironhide. Without a word, Madrak placed his hand on the young warlock's head and welcomed him back to his people. Since then, Gunborn has used every waking moment to help the Trollkins better themselves. He rapidly learned to harness the power of full-blooded trolls passed down from his father. He is stern but proficient taskmaster. Determined to make warriors of the trolls, Trollkin, and pigs he leads into battle, and daily his troops grow more practiced and deadly. His time with Signar has convinced him that the Trollbloods must become a real nation with a real army, and he intends to see that come to pass. So yes, he is everything of the Trollkin made even more dangerous with the full knowledge of modern military tactics. And he uses guns, real guns, not just throwing rocks. Not just uh, Spears, he is a firearm specialist since he works with the Trenchers with Signar. So, yeah, he is uh, way more dangerous to any modern nation than the more uncivilized Trollkin were. Even though every Trollkin is dangerous to man, whenever you know how man plays their games, you get on equal footing. And if you're already physically stronger and more resilient, you really can push the tide of battle any way that you want to push it. So... Gunborn is a very dangerous warlock, and let's see what his changes are for Mark 3 to Mark 4, shall we? And as always, let's start with his stats. So he is still a speed 6, still a mat of 6, although his rat has gone up to a rat 7, which makes sense since he is definitely uh, trained with his weapons, so as, as per usual. Um, so his rat's a little bit better. Uh, defense is still 15, armor still 16. He's still tough because he's still a Trokin. And it appears his abilities have changed, and this is one of the Mark IV reasonings here, because his originally his original field marshal ability gave kill shot and gunfighter. Alright. And kill shot allowed you after you killed somebody with a melee attack, you could make a range attack. And I feel like, you know, a lot of the guys, a lot of the war beasts have dual attack, or at least they probably will. So, but weirdly enough, he does not have dual attack. 
which is kind of odd, but maybe they expect him to kind of stay away from the front line as best he can, or maybe it was an oversight for Private Press. we'll never know. But his new abilities he was given, or yeah, his new abilities were a field marshal, run and gun, cohort models in this model's battle group gain a run and gun at the end of the activation. If it is destroyed, if it destroyed one or more models with a range attack, this activation, it can make a full advance, which is phenomenal and makes makes Trollkins a lot more dangerous because it gives them more mobility. And then it also looks like they gave him Resourceful. This model can upkeep spells on models in its battle group without spending Focus or Fury. And depending on how many upkeep spells he has, that would be pretty fantastic since he only has an arc of six, which isn't crazy high, but it's not crazy low either. But, you know, upkeep spells do take, take a lot after a bit. But we shall see when we talk about his spell list. Uh, let's go over his weapons real quick. Uh, he has a bazooka, of course, because why wouldn't a troll can warlock have a bazooka if they can? Uh, it, it, he has a rat 7 with it, a lot more accurate than now. It has a range 12, a AoE of 2, so 2 additional models at 2 inches away, and a POW of 14 and 8, and it is a magical weapon, and he still has critical devastation on it. So on a critical hit, models hit are thrown D6 directly away from the attacker. And then you roll a roll distance for each model that it affects. Move the farthest model first, and then everybody else. And the power is equal to the power of the blast damage of this weapon. So, well, except for the main guy hit who suffers the full 14. So, yeah. And then his melee weapon, of course, is just a basic axe. Not super impressive, but eh, you always need a melee attack. So, and I imagine you don't want to be shooting with a bazooka in melee range. Which kind of makes sense, because uh, that sounds like it would just hurt everybody. But let's see his feet, see if that changed any. And it changed slightly. I, is it a crazy thing? No, not really, but it's uh, it's less broken than it was before, I guess. So the original one, uh, in his control range, friendly faction models gain cover, do not suffer damage from range attacks, and cannot become knocked down. Now the do not suffer damage from range attacks, that was the part that was removed, because that doesn't make any sense. So the new one is while in his control range, friendly faction models gain cover and then blast resistance, which makes more sense. And then they cannot become knocked down. So they get, I'm going to call it variations on super tough because you can keep rolling tough rolls as long as you're not on the ground. So that's always fantastic. So yeah, no, I think he's just as good as the original and blast resistance is a, I'm not going to say it's a broken mechanic, but it's a very useful mechanic to have in the new Mark IV. Let's go over his spell list, see what changed. And then we'll start with what has stayed the same. So he still has Snipe, um, but Snipe has been reduced to a to a range plus 3 rather than a range plus 4, so that's more of a balanced situation. Uh, he still has Rock Wall, so he can still place a Rock Template anywhere within his control range. Um, and then can upkeep the Rock Wall, so that's nice, although it's not a upkeepable spell for his own guys unfortunately and then he has he got to keep a guided fire so while in the spellcaster control range models in his battle group gain boosted range attack rolls so it makes them even more accurate which makes sense for a guy who is military trained looks like uh, looks like we added sentry but we removed explosio or explosivo or whatever that spell is called so the explosivo that we removed Target friendly faction models ranged weapon gains magical or damage type magical if the affected model directly hits and boxes an enemy model with the attack from a ranged weapon. Center a 3 inch AoE on the box model then RFP that model. The models in the AoE are hit and suffer a power 8 magic damage roll. That is a well it's kind of a busted spell since it was a cost of one so and it's upkeepable. Yeah I yeah, it seems like you're just giving all your guys AoEs. So, but it's been replaced with Sentry. So, target friendly a faction a model gains rapid fire. A model with rapid fire can make one basic range attack during your maintenance phase, which is awesome. And it's upkeepable. So, at the beginning of your maintenance phase, whoever you have it on, it just automatically just keeps on firing. So, yeah, that's a that's a very very useful uh very useful thing for a ranged army. And his spell list is definitely very ranged oriented and protecting himself. So, 
yeah, you want to run this guy with as many ranged models as you can. And it looks like a lot of these models outside of his snipe are very good for his own guys. So, yeah. Yeah, so you want to keep him with as many ranged Trollkin war beasts as you can. But let's move on to his, uh, his next version, who became very popular during the Infernals invasion because... He actually united the Trollkins to stand up against the Infernals to keep them out of Trollkin lands. And we'll read a little bit about his story, but uh, yeah, his next guy sounds pretty legit, although there is not nearly as much reading on the next version of him because a lot of things were lost during the Infernals invasion, but we will go find his reading right now. Brigadier General Gunborn. The Trollbloods have suffered for decades at the hands of outsiders, and the Infernals' invasion was yet another human atrocity that punished the Creels. The Infernals had not come to Cain for their souls, but the cosmic horrors still slaughtered the children of Dunia whenever their forces crossed paths. During this turmoil, a Trollkin hero rose to the occasion and organized a proper military operation to force the Infernals out of Trollkin lands and far from the worshippers of Dunia. Brigadier General Gunborn has negotiated wartime peace treaties with other non trolkandunia worshippers, such as the Savage Faro, and assembled an army that is greater than the enemies of the Creels have ever seen before. He will stop at nothing until the world is rid of the otherworldly menace or anyone else who dares threaten his people again. So, he's upgraded a lot, and his ability to, well, basically kill Infernals is, uh, you know, always useful. So... I'm glad that he rose up to kind of take on the Infernals because I feel like a lot of Warcasters kind of stopped before then, before the Infernals invasion, uh, before the Infernals invasion, and he rose to uh, he rose to hit him up, hit him up man to man. So, but let's read his Mark Three to Mark Four changes and see what interesting abilities he has added onto himself. And of course, we will start with his stat line. He's still a Speed Six, still a, a Mat Six, still a Rat Seven. I guess they upgraded that in this version, they just ran it back to the back version, they've done that a couple times before. Uh, his defense is still a 15, arm is still a 16, uh, arc is still a 6, control range is still a 12, he's still tough since he is still a troll. He, His abilities, he still has a battle plans, and his battle plans are uh, bring it down, range 5, uh, target friendly faction, warrior slash unit. If the target slash unit is in range, it gains combat engineer for one round. A model with combat engineer gains an additional die on its damage rolls against buildings and structures. Which sounds cool, but its original version was a little bit better in my opinion. But, you know, maybe they maybe they figured we're going to have more buildings and structures in Mark IV. I don't know. Uh, but the original version was you it would target one warrior model. And uh, that guy immediately makes a range attack, and those attacks are boosted, both attacks and damage rolls. So, very dangerous indeed. Uh, looks like we removed the relay coordinations. So, that one had a range of command, target friendly a faction unit. If the unit was in range, they would gain hunter, so they would ignore cover and concealment when making range attacks. That's been removed. Uh, then, the other one that was removed was unload. Uh, also a range command, target friendly faction war beast, and if the war beast is in range, its ranged weapons gain a plus one to its rate of fire, so it allows it to shoot an additional time, or however many additional times is on its rate of fire already. So those two have been removed. The ones that have been added, we get combat coordination, so target friendly faction warrior model. If the target is in range during its activation of the turn, it can re-roll one attack and damage rolls then the combat coordination expires. Now, that is a very useful ability because I've had some very terrible rolls for attacks and damage rolls and having the ability to to re-roll <laughs> very low damage rolls is always a very useful. And then the last of the battle plans that he's gotten is Precision Strike. So while within 10 inches of this model, friendly models ignore other models when determining line of sight. And then friendly models can advance through other models within 10 inches of this model if they have enough movement to get completely past them. And as we discussed on Grizzle, that ability is phenomenal for Trollkin because they're all very medium to large bases on most of these guys. And having the ability to see through each other and move through each other is a very good because they do block each other very well being such large bases. So 
uh, unfortunate changes on the battle plans, but you know, added precision strikes. That's actually very, very useful. So, but let's see what his weapons are and see if they've gotten any better. Alrighty, we have his Liberty Rifle, and this thing is a beast of a weapon. Uh, he sells a Rat 7, still has a range of 12, so a rate of fire of 1. Although they did nerf down the power to a POW 10 from a POW 12, but this is an armor piercing weapon, so that nerf does make a little bit of sense. So when calculating the damage of this weapon, you have the base armor stat of models hit. So if he's a 16, it turns down to an 8. If he's a 20, it drops down to a 10. So yeah, this guy's just doing remarkable damage with his Liberty Rifle. So. And then he still has a Thunderbolt. So enemy models hit are pushed D3 directly away from the attacking model. On a critical hit, the enemy model becomes knocked down after being pushed, which, you know, you can fish for crits on that even while you're fishing for damage too if they survive. So really good at knocking down enemy war beasts and war jacks or you know, knocking down uh, knocking down warlock models or other war or warcaster models, very dangerous. Uh, then he still of course has his a basic axe. Um, it's still just a, you know, POW 11, it's not really anything too crazy. But let's see his, his feet and see if that has changed at all. And yes, actually, this is one of the few Warcasters that they are, or, or locks, that their feet has changed significantly. So it has gone from bombing run to shock and awe. The original bombing run, which was pretty broken, uh, well, I want to say broken, but definitely a great way to utilize uh, AOE weapons but uh, so bombing run gave you reposition three so after you after you finished your activation you got to move three inches and then it gave you full force and this is every this is every friendly faction model in his in his control range got this so full force is the power of blast weapons caused by the weapons with full force is equal to the actual pow of the weapon now I can understand in mark four you know the pow is now no longer halved it you know has different abilities, so maybe that's why they took this out because it really dealt with that. But I tell you, being able to blow somebody up with a POW 14, and then everybody hit is a POW 14. That's a very busted tool there, and I can see some people playing that up quite a bit. But that's been removed, and we've gotten to shock and awe. So while in Gunborn's control range, friendly faction models can reroll their attacks and damage rolls. So each roll can be rerolled once, so they can reroll. Well every attack so if you have lots of guns going or lots of attacks going you can you know roll it up if they roll low or you can uh, you can you know try to get crits easier if you're you know boosted to you know fishing for grits there you go but yeah so that's been changed up quite a bit but let's see his spell list see if that has been moved around either alrighty looks like we got a spell back it's called explosivo um, looks like they changed it up from his version one so we read about his version one a little bit ago, but uh, we're going to go. His new ability costs two focus instead of the one. It is still upkeepable. Target friendly faction models range weapons gain damage type magical, and if the affected model directly hits and boxes an enemy with an attack from a ranged weapon, models within two of it are boxed. And oh, two of the boxed models—they're not—they're not boxed. Uh, suffer an unboostable power eight magic damage roll and then the box model is removed from play so and that's within two so if you hit that in the middle of a unit it's no longer an aoe it's just everything within two inches so that's actually a little bit more powerful than an aoe so yeah that sounds like a spell that definitely needed to cost a little bit more than the original and just for reference the original if the affected model is directly hit and boxed by an enemy attack on um, boxes an enemy enemy model with an attack um, you have to send her a three-inch AOE on that model, and then it's you know removed from play, and then the AOE everybody in it suffers a power eight. So technically, this one's actually just pulling back to its original version, but just giving it just slightly more range on that weapon. And I imagine if you box say like a large-scale model, let's say like a war beast, uh, that is a lot bigger. Uh, that is a lot bigger two-inch uh, two-inch swing around than a, uh, a small model, but. You guys can play that up how you want to play that up, and if you guys have some really nice looking range attacks, well, that's very useful to have. Alrighty, and looks like some other spells have been removed and replaced with some other stuff. So Expose has been removed. Um, so Expose was a 5 inch AoE that uh, was upkeepable, but uh, 
While in the AoE, enemy models lose and cannot gain stealth or shield guard, and do not gain bonuses from spells, including animi that add to their armor or defense. And I understand they probably removed this since, you know, shield guard's not really... Well, it's still a thing, but, you know, I imagine this is just kind of a busted spell because it's a 5-inch AoE template. And then Foxhole was also removed, which is a buff for you guys. It gives them cover and then gives them blast resistance, basically. So, but, uh, yeah, that one's been removed. Probably because the wording is probably the reason that it was removed from Mark IV. Probably just change it up. And then Relentless Barrage has been replaced as well. Uh, that one is a target war beast in the model's battle group that is in its control range. Can immediately make one basic melee or range attack. And that's it. That's kind of a uh, it's kind of a one-off spell. I feel like I feel like there are other spells like that that will ray better anyway. But those have been removed. Here's what we replaced it with. We got high ground. So on this one, it is a cost two um, range control, and it's upkeepable. So that's great. So you place a three-inch template anywhere completely within the spellcaster's control range. The template remains in play for as long as it's paid for. Uh, while completely within the template, models gain up plus two defense against ranged and arcane attacks, which is good that they are both ranged and arcane, and their ranged weapons gain arcing fire. So if you guys don't already have arcing fire since you're on the high ground, you get arcing fire while you're within that AoE, so that's kind of nice. So yeah, no, that's a solid spell for especially, you know, he is a ranged guy, so having arcing fire you can shoot over other models and ignore intervening, so that's kind of nice. Alright, and then we were given Mage Sight, so while in the Spellcaster's control range, models in his battle group gain Isla Sight. All of them, not just one, everyone. And it's upkeepable too, so having Isla Sight against guys that have like, say, Stealth is always phenomenal to have. And it also ignores things like Cloud Effects too, so if somebody tries to, you know, block their people with Cloud Effects, da da, Isla Sights don't see clouds. Very dangerous, a lot more dangerous than others, really pushing him towards the, uh, the full, you know, ranged armies, so yeah, you should check him out for those. Then, his last spell, he was given Open Fire, which was the better spell I was talking about. Target cohort model in his battle group that is in his control range can immediately make one basic ranged attack, and a model, and a model can only be targeted by Open Fire once per turn. So, what's nice about this one compared to the Relentless Barrage is this cost is one, and basically you can just spend one to, you know, have have you know any number of guys shoot you know as long as you're paying one per guy so you can get a bunch of different a uh, bunch of different range attacks out without having to have a better you know rate of fire on them so I guess this is probably why they replaced the uh, replaced his battle plan for the unloads because they gave him a spell that just takes care of it with one focus so that's probably what it was but yeah no this guy is super dangerous for a ranged guy and we haven't seen too many uh, Trollkin that are super ranged. A lot of them are very melee based, but yeah, this guy is definitely a you know full force range guy, and he's definitely good with range war uh, war beasts. So yeah, keep him on. But that is it for today. We have talked about those three warcasters and their additional versions, and I hope you guys enjoyed. And if you guys are enjoying this, please like, comment, subscribe. It does help keep this steam train rolling. Please tell your friends and fellow gamers about this channel. It helps us keep this keep this thing moving as best we can it helps us keep growing helps us develop a better community you know a lot more insight and we love seeing comments on the videos uh, and also thank you again private to press for letting us read your a fantastic lore and as always class dismissed